I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday, praise God. Like I always tell you, I love Fridays. You know why? Because you have an opportunity to listen to these words again and again and again. I mean, go, go listen from Monday and listen to the whole series for the week. I'm telling you the truth. It will bless you. It will give you better understanding. It doesn't matter if you listen to them every day. Now, take time and listen to everything this weekend and be blessed. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, oh, I've got some wonderful thoughts to share with you today. But can we make requests for our daily bread right now? Are you ready? Open your heart. Believe God for a miracle today and you surely get it. Say with me, say, Father, I receive even as I demand right now, my daily bread, it's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you believe that, you'll surely have a testimony today. Oh, you will have a testimony today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about his peace. He promised us peace. He said, you know, our text is from... Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. It says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. I remember yesterday I was teaching exactly how you keep your mind on him. Very important thoughts I shared with you. If you didn't listen to it, go back and listen to yesterday's episode. That. And then I also want to encourage you to invite your friends to listen to this broadcast. Share it with them. Get them to like or get them to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let it, there's a lot of things there to bless you. Praise God. Now, then, this is what he said. He promised to keep you in perfect peace. Now, think about it. His idea of peace is not just, and, you, know, you know, just like a child. You know, when you have a child, a, a, a baby down that's troubling you, you know, you don't know what this child wants. This child is just crying. You, you, you're you trying to... Have, have they ever given you a child to watch over? You're, you're not the mother now. Maybe you're a guy, a lady, but not your child that you give birth to. But someone just say, oh, you know what, please, I, I, I need to rush down to get something. Can you please watch over this child for me? And boy, that child begins to trouble you. <laughs> now, you'll be looking for everything to give this child peace. You know that, right? Oh, you shake things. Hey, oh, you give it. Oh, do you want to eat this? Oh, do you, and the child just go on and cry. Now, you are just looking for what to give that child for the moment, to, to give you peace for that moment. But hey, God is thinking of how to give you perfect peace. I mean, he, he is just thinking, how am I going to make your life so peaceful? I mean, so peaceful. Imagine the things God thinks about sometimes. You know, I, I wonder if some of you sit down and reflect on things like this. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. I mean, peace is good enough. When is this perfect peace? So why is God thinking of keeping me in perfect peace? He is not saying, thou shalt ask God for perfect peace. He said, you God, anyone whose mind is stayed on you, you will keep him in perfect peace. Like, okay. Now you know something. If Jesus said in John chapter 14, my peace I give to you. See that now? Now, let me show you something. Haliba Shatu Lekede. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53. from verse 5. Now this was speaking about Jesus. Now he says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
the chastisement for our peace was upon him. Did you see that? The chastisement for our peace was upon him. He didn't just promise us peace. He sacrificed for it. And this is to let you know how important it is with God to give you peace, perfect peace. He had to sacrifice for it. He had to receive chastisement so that you will have peace. And you know the truth, brothers and sisters, has he been chastised? Answer for yourself. Do you think Jesus has been chastised? So where is your peace? You get an information that someone had paid all the money needed to purchase a house and he paid it for you. Now you need the house. What do you do? Do you go to that place and say, um, I actually need a house. Um, I know someone paid for me, but I just want to know how much is it so uh, I, I can start paying. Do you say that? Do you go into that house and start thinking of, okay, how do I pay the rent in this house? Meanwhile, somebody has paid the full price to purchase the house for you. It will be foolish for you to even be thinking that you have to pay rent for that house again after the house has been purchased for you. So now, he says the chastisement of our peace is like saying the payment required for us to have peace was upon him. I want you to think about this. How far God has gone for you to have peace. This is why it is important that you have peace. What is troubling you? I was talking to you yesterday and I was just telling you the different things, just examples. Now that's how I can tell you many things in my life and instructions that is backing them up. I'm personally now. Personally, ministry-wise, I can tell you, you see, the instructions that is backing everything up. I was talking to the Lord one time years ago. And, you know, I was trying to balance my personal finances with uh, the work God has called me to do. So how do I, how do I know? Because um, then we didn't even run a fellowship or anything. So I was trying to know. And most times people just give me money. They don't really specify, oh, this is for, because then they just know me. Or they just knew me. So they, 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 it's, not, it's not like we have a place where they come to and they say, oh, oh, this is your ministry. So, so I was trying to understand. And then um, we, we started doing something where ministry is concerned. So I had to get a staff that would work for me. So I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, so now, how do I, because running your personal finances and running the finances of the ministry, can, I mean, when it's different if, if you have a church or something, so you know the offerings people give, of course it's going to church, but now someone just gives you money, so how do I know what to put aside for the ministry, you know, and stuff like that. Then the Lord began to teach me some things. And he began to, and that's how you get into covenant with God. Because now I have told the Lord, I don't ever want to ask anybody for money. I don't want to ever borrow. I don't, I don't just want to get into that place where I say, please come and sponsor our ministry or come and give me money. Never. I, I don't want to do that. I, I, I never wanted to do that. And God has helped us, praise God. Yeah. So 
Then the Lord told me this. He said, now, for the ministry and to take care of everything that has to do with the ministry, he told me every 3 p.m., you are going to be praying for your partners and everyone that I have sent to you and will send to you. I said, and he told me, he says, if you do that, I'll sustain your work of your work, the ministry. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Lord. And that's what I said yesterday. Words come. Now, but why would he do this? Why would he tell me that? Perfect peace. He wants me to dwell in perfect peace. He doesn't want me to go around. And, and you know, it's, it's amazing. This has happened several times. And I, even, even our staff now, we have several staff now. Even our staff, I have to prove it to them sometimes. I said, toy with that prayer time and see what happens. And they've seen, praise God, they've seen like, whoa, <laughs> praise God. I remember one time, you know, not it has happened several times, you know, no money has come in and, okay, now we need to do some stuff. There is no money. And like, you guys have been taking prayers at this time for granted because I've not been around. Have you been praying? Oh, no, sir. See? You need to repent and start praying. And the moment, the moment they start praying, boom. <laughs> Why? Now, now, so now this is how you live life without stress. I'm telling you this without stress. Because that's what he wanted for you. So because he wanted it, he made a payment for it. Complete payment. The chastisement of our peace. So what will guarantee us peace? was chastisement and Jesus took it now because he took it you think now you you can quote this scripture the chastisement of our peace was upon him oh the chastisement of uh, you can quote it and quote it and quote it here there's still so much trouble in your life sometimes you need to calm down and 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 walk this truth up like I mean Lord you don't want me troubled right I know because you've done everything to give me peace. Okay, so Lord, how do I walk in peace in this area of my life? I'm telling you, like he did for me. And I know several people who walk with God who have the same testimony. You know, he will do the same thing for you. I mean, he will just come and tell you, son, I want you to start praying. You know, these things are so funny sometimes. <laughs> now, when his word comes to you, don't argue it. Don't try to figure how it happens. Don't try to figure how it happens. I remember one time, you know, you know, I was praying with my staff. Then the same financial issue. I said, you've not been praying. I said, okay, let's pray now. It's, it, it's three o'clock. Let's pray. And then we began to pray. And we began to pray. About 20 minutes, bam, an alert came. <laughs> Praise God. And I said, hey, see what I said? Like, huh? Yeah. Why? Now, now, I come in, okay, so we need to do this. There's no money. There's no money. Yeah. There's supposed to be money. There's supposed to be money. Why? Because I, I know he doesn't want me to get to this place where I begin to think, oh, what do we do now? What do I know he doesn't want me to get there. Why? Because he, my mind is stayed on him and he knows. So he is, he has taken that responsibility of keeping me in perfect peace. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now, now I thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, you know what the Lord just told me? He's just telling me that it's an area in my life and needs to get his peace on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. We'll do it. Yeah, yeah. We will do it. Praise God. Mm. Now, it's amazing how you know all these things, but then you still battle with some things. Praise God. Something I've been worrying about. Now, as I'm teaching you, he just said, son, you have never asked me for perfect peace in this area. Mm. Thank you. 
Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God in praise God. All right, then. So now, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I'm so excited because I, I no solution has come to me now, praise God. All right, so he, he, he knows and he doesn't want you to be troubled at all. So he gives you words. He gives, some of you need to ask him for peace where your house rent is concerned, where your accommodation is concerned. Some of you need to ask him for peace where your health is concerned. Yes, Lord, I don't like the fact that I get sick all the time, Lord. I need to walk in perfect peace where my health is concerned. I don't want to be troubled about my health. Oh, I I have um, whatever, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we, you, you claim the sickness. I have, um, I have my great headache. I have diabetes. I have uh, asthma. I have ulcer. When my ulcer starts, when my asthma starts, when my you know, you claim it. Who gave it to you? And you received it? Praise God. Aha. Uh -huh. Lord, it will keep me in perfect peace because my mind is staying on you. I know by your stripes we were healed. Lord, I've been having this migraine headache for too long now. I need it to be sorted out. I need your wisdom for my peace in that area. And oh, now you see, you see, the, the, make the request. That's, that's the first step. Just make the request. And allow him to do his work. And he's going to come to you. He will come to you and tell you, listen, from henceforth, start doing this and you will live in health. Now, it's not a general thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For example, I told you in, in, in our office, we pray every three o'clock and that's how the money comes in. Now, someone will say, eh, hey, I know, let me go and start praying at three o'clock also. Now, it may work, but it may not be sustained. You know why it may not be sustained? It may work because you believe what I said. But the sustenance has to be your own. That's the truth. So you may start it out, whoa, wow, I've seen something new. Now, don't forget to take it to the Lord. That's why I always tell people, now you've heard me share my own testimony. Now you take it and say, Lord, you told Pastor George what to do about his ministry and finances. Lord, okay, so he used to tell people that I need to hear for myself. And you spend time with the Lord. He will give you your own customized instruction. And as long as you keep your mind on that instruction. Now, that, you see what I just said? Because my mind is stayed on him. Whenever there's no money, I said we must have faulted somewhere. Check it. See now? And the doors open. My time is up. Praise God. Listen. Oh, may the Lord bless you this weekend. May the Lord open doors you never expected and give you peace in Jesus' name. And listen, I invite you to join the prayer meeting that is going on even now. Register on our website, show it on your screen, and choose your time of prayer. I'm telling you, we've been enjoying ourselves praying for our nation every day. God bless you. I'll see you on